Hello everyone, my name's Katrina. It is almost the middle of the year, so it is time to do the mid-year book freakout tag. Before I dive into the questions, I thought I would do like a super quick update on one of my reading goals-ish for the year. I didn't really do a video on my reading goals, I didn't really set any or aim to do any challenges in particular, but I did post a video talking about the top 18 books that I wanted to read in 2018, so I thought that this would be a good opportunity to let you know how I'm doing with that so far. I'd originally planned to read one to two per month to get through them evenly throughout the year and at this point I've read less than half but if I'd finished the two books I'm currently reading then I would have been halfway through. So basically I've completed seven of the 18 books, I'm currently reading two of the 18 books and the other nine I haven't touched yet. So I'm pretty happy with my progress, I'm not super behind on that front, I just gotta kick my butt into gear and then really prioritize these books for the remainder of the year. With that being said, let's jump in to the tag! Way too fun not to do. <laughs> okay. Ugh, I'll stop. <laughs> Best book you've read so far in 2018. It's hard to choose, but if you wanted to go and see like all of the best books that I've read so far this year, I've done a couple of videos talking about my top five books I read um, per season, so I'll link those down below. But I will highlight a couple, one of which I haven't mentioned in one of those videos yet, and that is Six of Crows by Leigh Bardugo. This is a book I've just recently finished, I finally read it, go me, uh, and I really really enjoyed it. Just after I finished the book I was leaning more towards giving this like a 4.75 rating, but I was like no, I'll just wait and stew it over a little more and see what I think about it after everything's kind of settled and I've processed everything that I've read. And this is definitely a five star read for me. I'll talk a little bit more about my thoughts in my upcoming wrap up video, but this was such a fun book. I loved the heist aspect. I loved all of the characters so, so much. It was a grand old time and I cannot wait to get to Crooked Kingdom. I'm going to pick it up real soon. The other book that I want to talk about is one I've been mentioning in a lot of videos recently, and that is My Favourite Thing is Monsters by Emil Ferris. It is a graphic novel, it is a murder mystery, but it's like super dark as well. There's a lot of kind of heavy topics that are explored in here. There's things like abuse, sex trafficking, the Holocaust. It deals a bit with race and being poor and sexual awakening. There's just so much going on in this book and I I think it did a really good job of tackling all of these topics without making this book super depressing. And I think part of that's probably because we see everything through the eyes of a young girl. The best sequel you've read in 2018 so far. Again I'm going to talk about two books for this question. The first one is A Borson by Garth Nix. This is the third book in the Old Kingdom series and I think this is probably my favourite of the series so far. I think. It's hard to pick out of all of them. I just love all of the characters, especially Mogget and the disreputable dog. I really, really loved how much action we saw in this book in particular. The previous book, Lyriel, I really enjoyed the first part of the book, getting to know the characters, especially Lyriel uh, when she was living with the Claire. Then towards the middle of that book I was losing a little bit of interest and it picked up towards the end, but this one just like from start to finish, so much action, so much going on, the stakes are so high and I love this book so much. I'm also going to be mentioning Obsidio by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff, the third book in the Illuminae Files. This was the conclusion to that series and I thought it was a really, really satisfying conclusion. It wasn't as twisty and turny as the other books in the series and we do meet new characters in this one that we don't kind of get as much solo time with, but I really appreciated seeing all of the characters that we met in the previous books so much more, including Aiden. Yes, it was still such an action-packed book and I really, really enjoyed how this whole series concluded. A new release you haven't read yet but want to. The Poppy Wall by R.F. Kong. This is an epic fantasy story inspired by Chinese history and I think in particular the Second Sino-Japanese War. And I'm sure you've heard a lot of the warnings as well that this can be quite brutal. It doesn't really shy away from a lot of the depictions of warfare and violence and things like that. So <gasps> I think it's going to be quite an interesting, interesting read and I'm really excited to get to it. So hoping to get to this soon. Most anticipated release for the second half of 2018. I have two books for this one as well. The first one is Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor. Strange the Dreamer was one of my favourite books of last year. It was absolutely fantastic. I fell in love with Lainey's writing style. The next one is Vengeful by Victoria Schwab. Vicious is a book I read a few years ago. Also one of my all-time favourite books. I've been waiting for this sequel for so long and I'm so excited. It's almost here. Oh, I cannot wait. I'm gonna probably reread Vicious because it's been a little while since I read it so why not just dive back in. I'm also super sad because Dark Dawn 
by Jay Kristoff should be on this list, but it has been pushed back a year. Sad, sad day for us Never Not fans. But like, I totally understand why Jay Kristoff is just coming out with so many books at the moment, and with his schedule, the first draft of Dark Dawn uh, is going to be submitted later than anticipated, and rather than rushing through all of the edits, the publisher has decided to push back the publication of Dark Dawn and actually spend the right amount of time editing the book and making it the best that it can be. So I'm like grateful in that respect that it's going to be a better book next year than if it was published this year, but I'm also just really sad that I have to wait so long. The biggest disappointment. I also have two books for this one and it's because of a really similar reason. Now these books I didn't dislike, I did enjoy them. I probably rated them about three and a half stars. I thought they were good books, but... I thought there was so much more that I could have gotten out of the reading experience. I thought there was just so much potential with these books, but they fell a little bit flat. And that is Ida by Alison Evans and Ace of Shades by Amanda Foody. Ida is kind of a sci-fi novel. It's about parallel universes and shifting between them. There's so much diversity as well. The majority of characters we meet in here are part of the LGBTQIAP plus community. I think the main character was bisexual and there's just so many genderqueer characters. There's also a trans side character so there's so much representation which was one of the things I love the most about this book. Ace of Shades is about a girl who goes in search of her mother and in order to do so she goes to the city of Sin and it's kind of traveling between casinos and burlesques and things like that. It's a really cool setting and both of these I thought had such great concepts, so much potential, but... I think in both of these instances there was a little bit lacking in terms of the world building or at least explaining things. Keeping things mysterious is one thing but not explaining things enough so that the reader can actually grasp completely how the magic systems or how moving through parallel universes actually works on a technical level is another thing. And I feel like both of these books fell into the second camp where they just didn't explain enough of how things worked. So I had so many questions and there were annoying questions as well. There were things that I just got worked up over. That's why I found that these two books were a bit of a disappointment because I thought I was going to love these books and there was definitely the potential for it, but the lack of explanation in some areas really held me back. The biggest surprise. I'm probably going to skip this question. There isn't a book that I've been like really pleasantly surprised by and was kind of shocked by how much I ended up enjoying it. So... Yeah. Favourite new author. This can be debut or just new to you. I haven't read too many new authors this year. There are a few debuts that I've read, but I decided to go with a new to me author because I've actually managed to read a couple of their books and really enjoyed both of them. And that is Madeline Miller, author of Circe and the Song of Achilles. These are Greek retellings, reimaginings, and I do really like Greek mythology, so I enjoyed diving into these worlds and getting either a fresh take on a story that we all know in the Song of Achilles, with Achilles obviously, and the Trojan War, but also getting to know a character that I haven't really been exposed to, which was Circe. Um, she's a very, very minor character in the Odyssey, but in Circe she is at the forefront. It is her story, so that was really cool. Newest fictional crush. I have a few. We have Reed from The Upside of Unrequited. He is the sweetest thing. Also Levi from Ace of Shades by Amanda Foodie. I was just really surprised by how much of a good guy he was. Levi is a con man, so I kind of assumed that he was going to be a bit more of a bad boy, but he was just so pure. He had a heart of gold, and I just fell in love. Newest favourite character? Lemon Fresh from Lifelike by J. Kristoff. I love Lemon Fresh so so much. She is so sassy, so quirky, just had the best quips and such a great sense of humour and I love her so much. <laughs> but also pretty much all of the characters from Six of Crows. I think the highlights for me would be Kaz, Inej and Jesper. Like on a whole I just think all six of the main characters that we follow in Six of Crows were so fascinating. They were all just so distinctive and had so much personality and I really liked getting to know all of them. A book that made you cry. The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. This one definitely hit me in the feels a few times. Unsurprisingly because it's dealing with police brutality and like a policeman shot and killed an innocent man so it's it's a really really hard-hitting book dealing with some really serious issues and it's just made me very emotional. A book that made you happy. The Upside of Unrequited by Becky Albertelli. This was such a cute 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 book. It was so sweet. This time I was crying tears of joy. It just really lifted my spirits when reading this one. Favourite book to movie adaptation that you've watched this year? I don't think I've seen any book to movie adaptations. No wait, I lied. The only one I can think of is Game of Thrones and I've been really really enjoying the TV show for that one. So 
Game of Thrones. Favourite review you've written slash filmed this year? I haven't done too many reviews. Mm, I'm bad. But maybe Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. I just had so much fun talking about that book. I really, really enjoyed Children of Blood and Bone, so I had a great time talking about the book and all the things I loved about it. The most beautiful book you've bought or received this year? Hands down, Circe by Madeline Miller. Like, how stunning is this, like, bronze cover with all the little swelly floral designs around the edge too? And then I'm gonna get this book naked for you because... It is a beautiful book without anything on. Oh my god, look at that foil. And I think it's only the first edition of the hardcover that does have the foil, so future printings won't actually have that design. So if you want it, try and get it ASAP. <laughs> Lastly, what books do you need to read by the end of the year? So this is my must-read pile for 2018. <sighs> oh, also... The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This is one I've been wanting to pick up, but I just haven't had the chance to yet, so this is probably going to happen soon if I have the chance. Oh my god, i just got so many books to read. But this is definitely one really high in my to-read list. Aside from that, all of the other books that I showed you, I think with the exception of one, were in my top 18 books to read of 2018. So I'm just going to really briefly go through the list. Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn and Terrier by Tamara Pierce. These are the two books that I'm currently reading. I haven't gone very far through Terrier. And I got like halfway through Gone Girl. I was reading this for a readathon and I haven't picked it up since the readathon. It wasn't really holding my interest. Like I have a feeling things are going to get interesting but it's just hasn't happened soon enough so I'm not sure what what I'm gonna do with this. Should I continue reading it? Let me know. I'm definitely gonna finish Terrier. This is a book that I picked up when I actually had a rare moment of not needing to read a single thing. Like I didn't have anything on my priority list but then something popped up. I had to put this down and I haven't had the chance to get back to it yet so I'll get there one day. The rest of the list includes Remind Me How This Ends by Gabrielle Seven, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell by Susanna Clark. I'm hoping to read this during the Tome Topple Readathon coming up 29th of June until the 12th of July. Wolf by Wolf by Ryan Groudon. A Gathering of Shadows by V.E. Schwab. I'm hoping to start my buddy read for this one in July. Lincoln in the Bardo by George Saunders. Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo. This wasn't in my top 18 books to read in 2018, but Six of Crows was. So I've now read that book and replaced it with this one because I definitely need to get to this one as soon as possible. City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty. Truth Witch by Susan Dennard. And A Court of Wings and Ruin by Sarah J. Mass. Quite a lot of books that I really, really want to get to this year. I have high hopes. We shall see how it all turns out. I'll let you know by the end of the year. But that is all that I have. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you very soon in a new video. But until then, I will talk to you in the comments. Bye! Oh, 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 oh,